I started fishing back in the 70s, uh, back before I had a license. I love to take people out fishing. We are the, the walleye capital of the world. We do get folks uh, really enthused about fishing in Lake Erie, and that's why we work so hard to try to protect it. And we do everything we can to promote and especially educate people as to what's happening in the lake and why we have such a major problem now with algae blooms. Not only is it ugly, it has a smell to it, but the biggest issue of all is the fact that it has the potential to go to a toxin. And this toxin is not a very good actor. Uh, when you look at a, a chart that shows different toxins, you clear up at the very top, it says dioxin. The one right below it is microcystin, which is the toxin that comes off of this algae. Every summer for the last 10 or more years, we have been experiencing large algal blooms in the western portion of Lake Erie. Basically, uh, after large rain events that phosphorus in the form of commercial fertilizer or animal manure runs off of the farm fields and into ditches and streams and then into the rivers, then they make their way into the lake. And these large rain events cause a significant amount of phosphorus and nitrogen to make its way into the lake that creates these algal blooms. The algal blooms are international. I mean, we've looked and we've seen them in Australia. There was a bloom in Brazil where the microcystin actually killed people. They're in China, and they're certainly here in this country. In the Great Lakes, the bigger areas that have them are Saginaw Bay and Green Bay. But we have looked at Lake Okeechobee in Florida. We've looked at the Chesapeake. We certainly have looked at the Gulf of Mexico. We're all connected to this problem in many ways. In 2014, from August 2nd to August 4th, Toledoans could not drink their water, and for a certain period of time, they couldn't even touch their water. Many were forced to make decisions between getting water and having other essentials like gas and food. This is a constant threat that we will be dealing with and paying for for years on years if we don't start to identify and work towards the solutions to the problem as a whole as far as agricultural pollution throughout the watershed. At first it was kind of like, yeah, whatever. I'm still gonna drink this water. I'm still gonna wash my clothes. I'm still gonna take a shower. But then it became real. And cats was getting sick. People were, you know, breaking out. It hit home. It was like, yo, this is us. This is happening. And at that point, you know, especially the families in my community that I serve, they were lost. Because of the water crisis, cost has gone up tremendously. And you gotta look at those families that are on the poverty cliff. There's no cushion for them. So you got these people now have to endure this extra hit on their water bill. And this is putting a lot of cats, a lot of people behind the eight ball. Where we're really negligent and not solving the problem is where it's coming from and causing the problem. The U.S. EPA has failed us in the Region 5, and in Flint, and Toledo, and all of Lake Erie. And we'll continue to do so until we can kind of get our act together. And plans that are happening now are all voluntary. Um, there isn't much regulation proposed in legislation. There's no backing for it. We have to build a better base of people that care about water, both for drinking, for recreation, for whatever purposes we have. I'm not a bottle of water. Okay? I'm, I'm used to walking to the kitchen and grabbing a glass of water and gulping it down and never think another thing about it. Now I don't look at it that way. I start to think a little bit about it. And I, I shouldn't have to think about that. I really shouldn't. No one should. Not in the United States, no. To me, that's the scary part that somewhere along the line, if we continue down this road, someone's gonna get sick. And it shouldn't have to get to that point.